Is this what it's like to live a life of luxury? Save it. Most moist cheese I've ever had in my entire life. This is too much, isn't it? Are we going too far? This is what we call a chip roll in South Africa. That is wild. It looks so right. delicious yes, and fluffy. Delicious. I feel like we've walked away from too many of these places at this point, so I think we're just going to commit. We're Matteo and Misha. We're currently traveling to all 20 regions of Italy on the ultimate Italian road trip. In our previous Tuscan episode, we felt the rush of the Motorcycle Grand Prix in the Jello. <laughs> and shaved about 10 years off of our hearing in the Central Grandstand. Bring your clothes. Today, we head to the Tuscan coast to explore the beautiful resort town of Viareggio. Welcome to another episode with the Global Expats here on the ultimate Italian road trip. We are your hosts, Matteo, that is Michelle behind the camera. It's 7.36 in the morning. We are here at Santa Maria Novella train station because we are headed on a day trip to the Tuscan coast. We got up super early to beat the heat. Here comes our train. And in case you haven't said this before, to get on the train, go through the doors. <laughs> The weather wasn't looking too grand, but we were in high spirits. Our train is on track. <laughs> <laughs> With the journey from Florence to Via Reggio only taking an hour and a half, we crossed fingers that the skies would clear up before we made it to the beach. Located within the province of Lucca, you will find the beautiful resort town of Via Reggio. With the peaks of the Apuan Alps towering on one side and the Ligurian Sea on the other, the seafront of Via Reggio might not be what you expect in Tuscany. The city dates back to 1172, but it was only in 1822 when Via Reggio started to become a popular tourist destination. All because Napoleon Bonaparte's sister, Paulina Borghese, decided to take a holiday here which resulted in it quickly becoming a fashionable resort town. During the second half of the 19th and early 20th centuries, Viareggio was one of the most elegant and upmarket seaside resorts in Italy. However, a large fire in 1917 destroyed most of the buildings along the seafront, resulting in the destroyed buildings being replaced with Art Nouveau buildings, which was an architectural style that was popular at the time. This history explains its distinctive appearance, and by looking at the cafes and villas, it's easy to see that the city is from a more recent time period. Let's get two of these. So starting the day we came to Grand Cafe Margarita. This is one of the oldest cafes in Viareggio. The ceilings are stunning. The entire vibe of it feels very old timey and classical and it's honestly just such a beautiful place to enjoy some breakfast. Puccini, the famous Italian opera composer, used to frequent this bistro, so we thought it was a perfect place to start the day with some sweet treats and a little espresso. We've never tried this before. It's covered in icing. It almost looks like a apple fritter. Apparently there's custard and marmalade in it. She said it was absolutely delicious. We've never had it before, so I'm excited to try that. Just some chocolates and these little chocolate-filled cigarettes. You know, one thing we failed to learn during our time in Italy is to seriously just stop buying so many things with sugar first thing in the morning. We always regret it. It's too many sweet things. And every time we have something that's just jam or plain, it's so much better. But now we managed to get icing, cream, Nutella stuffed, baked goods, a chocolate ganache thingy. I don't know. We learn the hard way.
So in Italy, a lot of the beach is privatized, which means that you have to pay for a, a sun tanning chair. Sometimes you have the option of getting an umbrella if you pay a little extra. So essentially you have to pay to sit anywhere on the beach except for this teeny tiny space that they call the public beach where you're allowed to sit for free and bring your own towels and umbrellas and it gets super, super crowded. So this morning we are on the hunt. We're trying to beat the crowds and check prices at different Lido's. There are a bunch. You're really not short of options here in Via Reggio. And we're doing a little price comparison to see if they're all pretty much the same price or if there's differences. So yeah, let's go. uscire e rientrare a vostro piacimento con un lettino aggiunto così After asking around at a few places, the prices seemed to range anywhere from 10 to 30 euro. And the price depended on how close the spot was to the water, whether or not an umbrella would be included, and if it was a sunbed or just a beach chair. So There's too many options for us. We're not very good at decision making when there's so many options. And there's just thousands of the different little beaches. And well, we can't pick which one to sit at. Because some have like no people and no vibe. Others have like a vibe, but then it's like there's other things that are different. So we're trying to find that one that might be fun for the day. Although the lady said they're actually not too busy here right now, which is pretty strange because it is the middle of August on the coast in Italy during holiday time. So I don't know, I couldn't quite figure out why she was saying it was empty, but such is life. So if you guys saw our Sicily videos when we were on the beach in Shefalu, you saw how packed the beach was, especially in August. So we were expecting it to be absolutely packed today. And it's Friday of a long weekend, but it's almost noon and there's like nobody here. Not like nobody, but it just, it does not seem like the holiday season in Italy at all, which is good, unexpected, but also a little bit confusing. Where is everyone? I, I don't know. Okay, I think, uh, I think we found a winner here after asking uh, too many places. We get very indecisive about the smallest uh decisions yeah very insignificant but we're also trying to like suss out a vibe again there's like not too many people here we're trying to have a bit of a vibe this place seemed the most vibey they have ping pong tables foosball tables the bathroom situation looks pretty nice they're like wooden panel it's called milano let's uh see we're trying to get a chair with an umbrella two chairs with an umbrella this one oh Latini beach beds also come with free Wi-Fi here. That's good to know. No. Allora, senza prenotazione mi è rimasto ultimissimo in gold, però solo con le due stanze. So one not at the back. Okay, and we're back with an update. So we had no reservation. Some people make reservations. It seems rather empty at present, but. The only thing left available without a reservation is the sitting chairs with the umbrella, like not the ones where you can lie down. And for a day at the beach, we did want to lie down a bit, you know? And you know back. what? Let's just go back to Irene. I, I feel like let's just, <laughs> let's just, luckily they're all right next to each other. This one, hopefully the guy will take us. I feel like we've walked away from too many of these places at this point. So I think we're just going to commit. 30 euro. 30 euro. And it's the one we can lie down. Right? Yes. Okay. Are you happy with that? Mm -hmm. You don't matter where it is? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
number three? In no. the first line. It's for all the long. You can go out and come back. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Perfecto. Thank you very much. Thank you. Home sweet home. A lot closer to the water than I thought it would be. No, it's actually perfect. There is a volleyball net in the water. Okay, and we came fully dressed. At the places you rent the Lido's, they have bathrooms and changing rooms and showers. Although I believe the shower is a euro to use. Hot shower. The hot shower is a euro to use. The cold shower I think is free. And now I'm gonna take my little swimsuit, my little pharmacia bag, and go change. <laughs> There's the cold showers there, and then you have an outdoor shower with the warm showers down at the bottom that cost a euro to use, plus a little restaurant and patio area. So this is the changing room. You've got some hooks there. And if you need to store some stuff, you got some cubbies. And this is the bathroom. We've got a sink with some soap, paper towels, and a toilet, but no mirror. Mirrors outside. Mirrors are here. Yes, please. Wow, the service here is great. So for 30 euro, we got two lying down sun tanning chairs with the umbrella and a spare third chair. Plus mine seems to have come with a rather sexy South African steward. Ciao. The one thing I never actually got used to in Italy coming from South Africa are the beaches. If you have visited South Africa, if you ever plan on visiting South Africa, our coastline is absolutely massive and we have space. The country has a lot of space. A population that's smaller than Italy, but actually the country is three times the size. So the coasts, when you go to the beach and that, A, you don't have all these privatized beaches and have to hire out chairs and that, and B, like you can sit down and there'll be nobody near you for quite a long way. It is just one thing that I've never got used to here. But I mean, it's super convenient that you can just get chairs and umbrellas here on the beach. So Mateo and I actually have never rented chairs and umbrella on the beach. We always walk a long way down to get to the free beach. But we thought today, hey, why not? 15 euro each. If you're here all day, I think it's good. And then we can go and come as much as we want. You can leave your towels and stuff and it's ours for the day. If you know, let us know in the comments. <laughs> the water here seems to have a lot of algae in it. In our Sicily video, some of you may have seen that the water there is almost always a crystal clear blue turquoise gorgeous color. A little bit different being here, but refreshing nonetheless. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello. Oh, do you get a little sun visor too? <laughs> do you need help? buy you a speedo but you scrunch your shorts all the way up you definitely shouldn't wear any sun cream today because you're white so it's been approximately half an hour since we have our chairs for the whole day we're gonna leave them here with our towels go to the supermarket and get some food and drinks so i bought my my cooler with 30 stickers from the supermarket plus an additional 10 euros because I haven't signed up for the loyalty card, you can get a cooler. Wow, influencers in the wild. If you've learned anything along our. Okay. All right. Good. If you've learned anything along our journey here in Italy, is that we always opt in for the supermarkets over restaurants and that. Call it a long-term strategy rather than just coming and splashing out in one place. Stretch it out over a distance. Your money goes a lot further. This journey will go a lot further. We don't have to live on the streets. Conad City. Yeah. What are we getting? Cereal? Oh, watermelon? Ooh. Coconut? That looks so good. Oh, this is the same one we came to last time. Is it? I think so. As long as there's refrigerated beer, I'm happy. Our only beer option. Usually it's much bigger. What do you want to do? Okay, so that you do have some cold beers. One euro thirty each. Still cheap. Very limited selection. So maybe we'll grab a few, pass another supermarket on the way home and see if they have some as well. So after scouting out the Conad, we decided to try the next place since it's just down the street. The Carrera 4 Express. See if they got some cold beers. Hopefully we'll hit some luck. I mean that Coronet also didn't have any fresh bread coming out the oven, so Yeah, we're trying to make some sandwiches or something, make a little snack. Oh, that's so cool. We found spot two, but it's even smaller. Now that's what we're looking for. No price there, but I'm pretty sure it should be decent. This is too much, isn't it? Are we going too far? I don't know. Four or five or six? Five. Okay, five is. Crunchy. Probably gonna make it sick, but. Okay, look, so we always seem to go a little bit too far. The option was either four big beers or six. Four means if we run out, we have to come back and get. So I'd always go with the safe side and just get the six. Except now, sitting in the sun, little Mishu's gonna be head in the clouds for a little bit. But who cares, we're on the beach. Got some focaccia, some ham, some cheese. Gonna have us a feast and feast on the beach. This is why you bring a cooler box. For 20 euros, we've got six big beers, yes. the focaccia, two bread rolls, cheese ham. What else did we buy? Water. 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 Oh, 
What do we got so, there, chef? So I got four slices of cheese. But if I'm gonna have two meals, I'm gonna have only allowed one slice of cheese per meal. That means that the four slices of salami We're really and one slice of cheese. I'm missing butter, so it's gonna be a little bit dry. Yeah. Here I have a pano tipo numero uno, so like the plain bread that you get in Tuscany. Salami, but it's Milano salami, so it's not just normal salami. And provolone, one slice, one slice of prov provolone cheese. Maybe a bit dry. I realize that we don't have any other ingredients besides beer and water. And neither of those will go on here. Should have bought some butter, but Hey, for like three euros, who's complaining? I mean, three euros for all the food, not just the stroll. Huh. Tastes as dry as it sounds. <laughs> Meanwhile, I told him the bread would be too dry. So I got this box of focaccia with olive oil. And when you open it, it comes in these little packets. It seems like there's one giant fluffy piece in here. I feel like this made more sense, but I got some pushback, but we're about to see whose sandwich comes out better. Hmm. Oh, that is fluffy. Look at that. Even on its own, it's already a win, so. This is what we call a chip roll in South Africa. Although a chip roll is supposed to just be butter and chips. However, this is an expensive chip roll. It's got a piece of salami and cheese on it. Ooh. So what you do is you put your chip <laughs> and then you get the top piece and you go chip roll. I want to be a Simba chippy. Mm. Fine dining on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Travel hack. Don't buy spices for your roll. Just buy chips with spices and put them on your roll. And that way you have a whole multitude of flavors mixed in with the salami, the cheese, the bread. I don't even have to buy extra ingredients. That is travel hacking. 101. This is not sponsored got, by Doritos. <laughs> I think I've got the definition of travel hacking a little bit wrong, but chips on roll. Mm. Travel hack. <laughs> mm. Is this what it's like to live a life of luxury? Huh? Hands free shade. Huh? Usually on my little own free beach, I have to go like this. Hands free. Do you want to demonstrate how this works? Watch this. Sun on my face. No sun on my face. Sun on my face. No sun on my face. Ooh, ah. Shade. No shade. Shade. No shade. Shade. <laughs> <laughs> so easily amused, are we not? <laughs> How's that working out? If I had a cup holder right now, it would be perfect. Now, you see, in the sun there, you almost need a cup holder in the shade. So, like, if I could go like that, and then, like, and it went back to the cup holder, that would be an invention and a half. Just get a long straw. Unanswerable question of the day. Why is there a Portuguese flag right here? We don't know. This is Mateo's contraption to keep the beer in the shade. So... The sun is getting too low. Could have been an engineer, I think. Because that is foolproof. <laughs> you look like Wolverine. <laughs> it is approaching 5 p.m. The people are coming out and it's seeming to get a bit more busy and exciting. I think they've learned to skip the morning, or maybe it's because it was cloudy and grey. But yeah, it's getting a little bit more full now, a little bit more festive, and it's starting to look like a lot of fun. Via Reggio does offer something different and special, as it is different to all the cities in Italy, due to the fact that all the buildings were rebuilt a hundred years ago. 
So if you have some free time and you're hanging out in Florence and you want to do a fun little day trip that only takes about an hour and a half to get you, then add Via Regio to your list. You won't regret it. So we have left our Lido for the day. It's about 6 p.m. right now. The sun is still baking. And we're off to get some gelato because the sun's really taking it out of us today. So we've come to this place called Laboratorio del Gelato and they do artisanal gelato here, which means when you walk in, you don't actually see the gelato. It's just a bunch of metal tins with lids on them. And then you choose your flavor from the board and they're known for their crema de mentecata. It's lemon, eggs, and vanilla. And it is absolutely delicious. We could have gotten two flavors with this cone, but I just had him do the whole thing. Oh, it drips so fast. I got a special coffee one that has massive chocolate chunk, chocolate chip cookies inside. So really good. Coffee and chocolate. You, you can't go wrong with that. You can't. Have you ever tasted the best pan in the world? In laboratory gelato, they eat the best pan in the world. Special with the cream. Try it. Oh, that looks so right. delicious yes, and fluffy. I feel so spoiled right now. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> Okay, so pane in Italian means, oh my god, there's gelato all over my hands, I'm so sticky right now. Pane means cream. Look at how fluffy this is. Whoa. That's insane. This is like next level high quality. She wasn't kidding. Guys, if you're in Via Reggio, you need to come to this place. That was so sweet of her. And that is good whipped cream. <laughs> you see, this is a problem. Take your whipped cream back. <laughs> Take your whipped cream back. No regrets. No regrets. I'm just. <laughs> so good. Chocolate. That chocolate is coming. I do come across a lot of random little findings in this country and what I found in Viareggio is that there's this shop that sells salami that they've been making since 1770 or something so we're gonna go try and find just like a piece of salami from this special shop because you do get different salami some contain fennel some contain nothing you get a Tuscan one you get a Milan one you get a Hungarian one from what I understand they are famous for their artisan salami called gombitelli and they've literally been producing it since 1797. For the salami you can see there is made by us. Okay. Do you want to taste something? Yep. You like truffle? That's yours. Thank you. This one is with truffle. This is your luggage. It's got truffle in it, eh? Oh, it smells like truffle. That's great. That's weird. Yeah. Whoa. No way. That is wild. Are these wow. all different? Yeah. Jeez. This one is the cut of filling in your. Oh. Okay. It, looks it looks like bolt on. It looks like bolt on. No way, it's stuck. I accidentally bit mine already, but. This is what it looks like. It tastes like a, a pork sausage, you're not gonna laugh. Salami of our invention, something like Tuscan salami. And this is called mortadella di gombitelli. Mortadella just because it's softer than a normal salami, but incredible tasty. Okay. Mm. Let's see. Cheers. <laughs> wow. 
Oh, it is a lot, so much fattier than normal salami. He said it's similar to the Milano one, but it's like really oily. I like it a lot. With uh, the flower of chestnut, and is this kind of one? Something like uh, a Tuscan Negra. Okay. I think that uh, this is one of our best products. Yeah. Uh, Otherwise, that's a lot less. It's a lot less strong than like a prosciutto crudo and that which makes it a lot more palatable. I could have a lot of this on a sandwich because that's not as intense as the normal like ham that you actually have. It's a difference between buying high quality than it is like buying the one that we usually buy on special at the supermarket. Mm. This is a particular kind of beef. So this is a free range pig. So it has a different flavor to it. It's like Biltong in South Africa. Really? Yeah. If you saw a Biltong video, then you know what Biltong is. I'll link it here in the top, there in the top corner. I don't think I could eat anymore what? after this. I'm getting so full. This is wonderful. Perfect. 24 months. Oh, that's a one big of the biggest. <laughs> this is most moist cheese I've ever had in my entire life. Oh. It's called cacio di frizza, oh. just because frizza was our grandfather. And this is the classic. So uh, this is a uh, sparkle cheese. Oh. How? Mm -hmm. You like it? That's good. I've never had these textures and cheese before. They're so good. If you're passing through Via Reggio and you love salami or cheeses, then you have to come past Salumerie Trilia. Michelle and I must have been buying bad meats and cheeses because whatever I just tasted in there was nothing like any of the other meats or cheeses I've ever tasted in my entire life. So. I think we've been doing it wrong. So one day when we start making the big bucks, I think we're gonna come shopping here for our meats and cheeses because that's on another level.